All right, now I know we said last time when Sarah finished doing the video inside the van that I said I'd do a, an outside tour for you all. But um, I've had a few people ask me about my solar system and the battery setup that I've got inside the van. So I thought I'd give you a quick video on all of that and um, basically give you all the information that I have. Now, a little disclaimer to that is that I'm not an expert at all when it comes to this sort of stuff. I did my research prior to purchasing what I've got. So I definitely recommend that you do the same. There's plenty of auto electricians out there um, that can help you out and answer the questions. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you guys have. So do fire away and I will uh, find the answer if I don't know it. So yeah, let's get inside the van and have a look and see what I've got. Alrighty guys, so as you can see, I've got two batteries here. Now both of them are 150 amp hour lithium LiPo 4 batteries, equaling 300 amp hours. Um, the reason why we went for 300 amp hours is because we got a full compressor fridge, um, which is 218 liters. The last thing we need is for our food to defrost in the freezer and for it to get warm in the fridge. So that's why we went for 300 amp hours. Um, it was definitely recommended to us um, by our dealer in Brisbane Camperland um, for Jayco. Um, he spoke to Springer Solar. Now Springer Solar are in Brisbane. They work with Jayco. Um, so if you're buying a caravan from or camper van from Brisbane Camperland, definitely um, ask them about the lithium setup because they'll um, forward you straight on to Springer Solar and sort everything out for you as well. Um, now I'll just go through all the things that I've got here. Now over here, this little device here um, is my Victron Blue Smart Charger. Now that basically converts my AC to DC um, for when I'm plugged into the mains, which we are today. That's why it's flashing on. Um, now some of you are probably wondering, where's my DC to DC charger? Now DC to DC charger, if you don't know, is basically when we're driving. Um, the power from the car basically comes in and charges the battery while we're driving to our next destination, let's say. Um, I was basically um, recommended that I didn't need one. Um, this was plenty big enough um, with the solar panels that I've got on the roof. Now I've got three solar panels on the roof. Each one is 160 watts, equaling 480 watts on the roof, um, which is quite substantial. It does bring in a fair bit of power for me. Um, next to the charger, I've got my MPPT. I hopefully you can see that. Um, now that basically is for my solar panels on the roof. That basically brings all the power from the solar panels through this little device here and charges my batteries. Um, what else have I got? Now all this system here is Bluetooth. Um, I've got an app on my phone, it's called Victron Connect. Um, I'll show you a little bit of that, just in a little while. Um, but I can see everything from my phone, which is really handy. Um, now this over here is my inverter. Now this is a pure sine wave inverter, it's the Phoenix 12800. It's classed as a 650 watt inverter. Um, I only just purchased this last week, it didn't come with my system. Um, I didn't think I needed it, or I thought I'd give it a shot without it. Um, look, I could still live without it, however, there's a few things that we'd like to do off-grid. Um, one of them being using the washing machine, which is 235 watts. Um, second is basically me charging my laptop because it, the battery's not that great on it. And when you're doing a lot of editing on there, it just drains the battery really quick. And when I've only got the 2.1 amp 12 volt to charge it back up, it just can't keep up with what I need to do. So this is really gonna help me out. I'll just go back on that DC to DC charger. Look, um, if I had my time again, would I put one in? I probably would. Not that I've never needed to charge my batteries whilst I've been traveling. I've seriously, this, system that I've got has never got me below 75%. Now, when I say that, I was actually underneath a tree 
and we had three to four days of clouds. So I had basically nothing powering the solar system, but yet I was still running a full compressor fridge and it got down to 75%. Now I only need a trickle bit of sun and this thing just shoots straight back up to 100%. These things charge so much quicker than an AGM or a lead acid battery. Now there was a few factors for why we purchased the lithium. One, because we're off grid. Two, we're doing low cost camping. They obviously charge quicker. You can go to a depth of discharge on these at 80%. With an AGM or a lead acid battery, it's only 50% before you have to recharge it. Now these can even go down to 100%. However, they don't recommend that um, because it's gonna basically ruin the lifespan of the batteries. Now these things, can last you seriously between 7 to 15 years probably even longer um, if you look after these and care for these and treat them properly these things can pretty much outlast your life I reckon um, now when it comes to the AGM and the lead acid batteries you know you're looking at anything between three to seven years um, again, you know, if you look after them correctly, then they can go up to maybe 10 years. The other thing, another reason why we purchased these was because how light they are. These things weigh a little off the weight of an AGM or a lead acid battery. And I need things to be lightweight when it comes to traveling. Because you know what it's like, you get in the van, you pack everything in there, and before you know it, you've got heaps of stuff and you're well overweight so you know this was a massive consideration for us even though it cost us a lot more money hang on i'm not going to say the price just yet but if you wait till the end i'll give you the price of what all this system is i don't want you to pass out just yet so just keep on watching all right so let me show you what the uh, app gives me on my phone okay so hopefully you can see that guys so that's the victron connect app just click on that all right so as you can see there i've got my smart bmv um, controller which is up on the wall i will show you that in a minute uh, i've got my two lithium batteries on there my battery protect i've got my um, blue smart charger as well um, and then i've got my smart solar controller it's not going to show any wattage on there i do apologize the reason for that is because i am connected to power so there's no need for it to draw any power from the solar um, voltage at the minute is 21.39 volts i'm not currently drawing any amps um, and again it just tells me the voltage um, i'll just go into the history now as you can see there it gives me a graph of basically i think it's up to like 30 days that this graph lasts so as you can see I'll just give you a little rundown. So yesterday I had 1.65 kilowatt hours come in um, from my solar, um, which peaked out of a maximum of 421 watts. So don't forget my, my wattage on this roof is 480 watts. So 421 is pretty good. And a maximum of 21 volts from that. Um, my battery maximum of 13.63 volts and a minimum of 13 volts. Now if I scroll along and I'll go seven days ago. Now if you look at that graph there, that's showing at 2.78 kilowatts an hour. That's from my solar that is. And 437 watts was my maximum with 21.21 volts. So that shows how good this system really is monitor hopefully you can see that so this is this was put in at the same time as the batteries so this is just my monitor it tells me everything on there so as you can see there it's at 100 percent you can, just there's so much information on this um like 14.2 volts it's running 1.8 say 1.8 amps it's running and then my watch is coming like obviously like i said it's not really drawing any watts in because it's on mains power at the minute I'm not using any amp hours because it's on main power. But you usually just see everything on there or you can just go straight to your phone and it tells you everything on there as well. I wake up every morning, I look straight at that and it's 100%. Um, not always, not always, but um, pretty much 99.9% .9 of the time it's at 100%. And obviously we're living in Australia, so we'll, we've got beautiful climate. Sun's pretty much out all the time, depending on where you live. 
in Australia, but um, yeah, we've been on the road for four months and this thing has not let me down once. Seriously, it is so good. I can highly recommend it. If you can afford, wait for it, 7,000 bucks for this setup that I've got, this exact setup, then you're onto a winner. Um, and the reason why I say that is because we've got friends that are traveling around Australia with us um, and they've got an AGM battery setup. They've got two AGM battery setups and they've got two solar panels. They've got a compressor fridge and they've been struggling. They actually had to leave a uh, free camp or low cost camp and go onto power because their battery just couldn't keep up with their compressor fridge. And that's the difference um, to lithium and AGM. Um, if you seriously can afford to upgrade, pay three times the amount, but if you can afford to, it's definitely worth it. So there you go, guys. That's my setup. Um, I hope that was informative enough for you. Um, I will answer any questions that you guys have. Um, I don't know everything, but if, if you want to know something, I'll definitely find it out for you. Uh, I will leave everything in the description below as to what I've got, the company that I bought it from. Um, so you guys can check them out. You can ring them up, have a chat to them. They're, they're really nice people. So yeah. I hope you like it guys again give us a thumbs up thanks for watching um, keep watching um, subscribe to the channel and press that notification button so you don't miss out on any other videos that i'm going to be putting up later all right guys take care and thank you again bye